Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing villains that I love. So a good villain in a good story can really make or break the story for me. And these are all villains that I have developed a special place in my heart for because even though they can be horrible and despicable and ghastly, I love to love them. But before we go ahead and get on into the list, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. The first villain I'm going to be talking about is Lestat from The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. This is a series that I really want to reread because I just remember the characters being so vivid and the struggles that they went through. But the reason that I love Lestat is that he actually embodies what I think of when I think of vampirism. He is extremely vain and narcissistic and he's brutal and he doesn't shy away from his true nature. He doesn't try to hide it, but he's also very deep and he's always asking himself these philosophical questions that kind of gives him more depth of a, as a character. So he's not just a character that goes around wanting to eat humans and drink their blood and feed and evil. I mean, he is those things, but there's just more to him. And he's such a complex character. And I think he's just such a scrumptious villain. The next villain I'm going to have to go with is Smog from The Hobbit. I love Smog. He's one of my favorite characters. So Smog was the last great dragon of Middle-earth and to me there's something just romantic about that and a little bit sad. So even though Smog is greedy and he hoards gold and he killed a bunch of humans, you can't help but feel a little bit sad for him. He is the last great dragon, he's the last of his kind and all he cares about in life is gold and people are trying to take that away from him. Even though he has done despicable things, I can't help but have a soft spot in my heart for him. The next villain is Tara Vangian from the Stormlight Archives, and I kind of regret picking up Rhythm of War for this example, but Tara Vangian's role in this series I think is really developed mostly in Rhythm of War, that's why I chose this. But Tara Vangian is one of those villains who deep down is extremely altruistic, and he really thinks that he is doing good. Like he has a goal in mind, and it's a good goal, but the means to get to the end are not always noble. So he is willing to do horrible, despicable things in order to achieve a goal that he thinks is good. And when you think about it, who actually has authority to say what is good and what isn't? And Teravangian is kind of taking up that role and he's not afraid to sacrifice things in order to reach it. And I have to admire Teravangian because he is a master plotter and a master schemer, a master manipulator. And just the way that this book ended with him just further sets him up in my mind to be an awesome villain even more so going forward. Next we have Khalid from The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. And in this book, Khalid is a ruler, like an emperor, and every single night he marries a girl and takes her and kills her by dawn of the next day. And our main character's best friend was one of the girls that he killed, so she actually volunteers to marry him so that she can kill him, but she ends up surviving the night by telling him stories. And the reason that I like Khalid is because he is built up to be just this despicable character. And as the story progresses, you actually learn more and more about him and why he was killing all those girls. There's actually a reason behind it. And you just learn so much about him, especially his internal turmoil and his conflict and how that is affecting his actions and how it affects the entirety of his empire. And it's just so layered and so developed and so complex. And I just loved how the author portrayed him him to be this horrible, horrible villain, and there's actually way more to his backstory than we originally thought. The next villain you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about, and that is Victor Vale from the Villain series by V.E. Schwab. I love Victor. I think he's officially one of my favorite characters of any, like, sci-fi fantasy series. But first off, Victor is extremely despicable because of his extraordinary ability. So he is able to cause pain to others. So right there, when you have that type of power that you can exploit and injure people with, that is a very scary thing. And he is not afraid to use his power and cause pain to people. 
Victor also isn't afraid to kill people, but he is very methodical in his killing. Like he always has a reason to kill. But at the same time, who are we, who is Victor, to decide who should live and who should die? So even though he has his reasons, he can justify his reasons, murder is murder regardless. Victor also seems to have some sort of conscious, I guess you can say, because he does have people in his life that he cares about and looks over their well-being. So he's not a complete sociopath, but in my opinion, his actions are or can be very erratic, which kind of keeps me on my toes when I'm reading. And then the next character I feel like no villain list would be complete without, and that is the Darkling from the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. When I first read this trilogy years and years ago, I actually really loved the Darkling. He was one of my favorite characters, and I just finished watching the Netflix adaptation, and once again, definitely one of my favorite villains. The reason that I kind of sympathize with the Darkling or General Kirigan is because he really does have a good goal in mind originally. He cares about the Grisha. He understands that the Grisha have been oppressed. He wants to protect them. But it gets to the point where he has complete tunnel vision and he will do anything to achieve this goal, even if it means hurting other people in the process, and he's completely okay with it. So once again, we're dealing with that question of who decides what is right and what is wrong wrong and what means are okay to reach an end because he is remorseless and ruthless and will sacrifice other people in order to keep the Grisha safe and there's just a lot of questions that go along with his actions and I can't help but feel a little bit sorry for him and I can't help but understand where he's coming from. Definitely a very complex villain in my opinion. The next villain is Catherine from the Three Dark Crowns Quartet by Kendar Blake. I will say that I always, always felt really sorry for Catherine way from the beginning of this series. So in this trilogy, there are three sisters that are fighting for the crown and each sister has a different magical gift, but Catherine is supposed to be a poisoner, meaning that she can be subjected to poisons and it doesn't affect her. When we first meet Catherine, we learn that her gift to be immune to poisons has not manifested itself yet. So for years and years and years, she has been subjected to poisons, number one, to trigger her gift, and number two, to help her develop an immunity. So she's described as being like scarred and unhealthy because of being subjected to poisons her whole life. And that just really was disturbing to me, you know, from a child all the way up until like an older teen basically being tortured by poison because she did, talks about how sick it makes her and it's just it was just uh, it gave me the shudders and she was totally willing to go through that in order to do what she had to do to uh, take the throne eventually and Catherine is extremely resilient she's not afraid to uh, do what she has to do even it might even if it might not be good in order to get the throne and she ends up employing some dark arts and things that she shouldn't be involved in just to gain the throne so even though Catherine is not a good person, her goals were not necessarily good, she definitely didn't have any remorse, you definitely have to respect her persistence and her willingness to do anything. And lastly, we have Holland from the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. I really liked Holland. I didn't really like him so much in the first book. The second book is where I kind of started to like him. And as we learn more about Holland, you can't really hate him as much as you think you can because I feel like Holland is a product of his environment. So Holland has not had a good time of it. He has been exposed to violence his whole life, murder his whole life, and then he ends up becoming enslaved to these rulers who basically use him for his magical abilities. So I feel like Holland is never really his own person. He is always acting on behalf of another. And I feel like if you are in that position for a long amount of time, you kind of get conditioned to not think for yourself, but to think how the other person wants you to. So I kind of have to forgive him for some of his actions just because of that. And I also loved how he was an Antari also and just his interaction with Kel and how he thought about being an Antari and the different Londons and you know how he related to his London and I just thought it was a great backstory to a character and when you just learn about all the stuff that he went through you really can't be mad at him. All right, you guys, so that is a list of some of my favorite villains that I can't help but love. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them or maybe what some of your favorite villains are, and I will see you all soon in another video. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.